everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. I always come to basics and talk in January because of all the New Year stuff. And you'll find that the my topic in January, my approach is pretty similar, but we'll hit it kind of in a different way each time because I find that people fall into the same rut every January. They, there's things they say they're gonna do and then they don't, or we bite off more than we can chew. So um, for those of you who I haven't met, my name is Sarah from Catalyst Wellness Coaching. I own nutrition practice downtown Janesville here. Um, I mostly work with um, adults with uh, GI issues, GI diagnosis, um, autoimmune issues, um, weight loss and energy issues, some hormone stuff too. Um, and then even just kind of those looking to develop some healthy habits and needing kind of a place to start. So um, I pass out a little bit of information. I have a Facebook page if you want to follow it. Um, there's a little bit of information in there too, some like testimonials and just stuff like that. So if you guys have questions, let me know. Yep. I'm trying to get over there when I came here too. Yeah. Uh, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, some corporate wellness as of this year, um, uh, both online and in-person groups, usually on autoimmune or um, IBS groups in particular. Um, I am in the process of releasing a meal planning app this year too. It's like not done yet and it was supposed to be done in October. So I'm working with a tech team and um, we're getting really close. And so. The idea with that will be um, that from your laptop, desktop, phone, that you can plan your meals for your specific macronutrient goals, allergies that you have, maybe a specific diet that you're following. You can enter vegetarian, pescatarian, um, low FODMAP, which is a medical-based diet we use for GI disease, autoimmune. You can say, I don't like shrimp, tomatoes make me itchy, whatever it is. And you can enter all that and set up a profile um, you know, if you've worked with me before or if you haven't, it'll give you some basic macronutrient, macronutrient caloric goals if you want to lose weight, if you want to gain weight, if you want to whatever. Um, and then it'll spit out basically meals and grocery lists for you every week in about 15 minutes. And so um, that's where I find I do these custom meal plans for people, but that's where I find that at the end of the six or eight week sort of trial or like, you know, an elimination diet and people are feeling good, but then they're like, well, now what? And so that's the bridge between kind of teaching people how to do that with a little bit of a tool. So that'll come out soon too. Um, two big things I want to talk about today, they both start with S. One is how to start and the other is how to sustain. Um, some people get started really well, especially the first of the year and they go like all in and they're at the spin class at 5 a.m. and they're eating carrots all day and like things like that, right? But then Around about now, actually, we're like January 21st, is a lot of times those people that went all in 100% are a lot of times falling apart right now with the things they said they were going to do at the beginning of the year. So then sustaining becomes an issue, right? They're like all in for three weeks and they're like super healthy <laughs> and then they go off the rails but then they go, don't get back up and they don't sustain. Um, there's other people that never get to the sustained part because they can't get started because they don't know what to do or you're up till two or three in the morning on the internet trying to figure out what to eat or not eat or like what kind of exercise you're supposed to do or you're like writing all these plans and like you bought all the cookbooks and you've done all the things but you haven't really done anything like you haven't done the action part because you've just been in planning mode for 10 years or whatever it is so so starting and then sustaining so i'm gonna talk about both of those we'll start with the starting piece and then sustain how many of you in here have made new year's resolutions of sorts or like something you want to do differently in 2023 okay can you share just a couple like what one of yours or what it was i'm trying to get organized organized okay and clean okay or, like decluttering a little bit or like some of that it. yeah totally. so that's your goal so did you what action steps or what things did you break that down or like how you might do that or like how you um, might well, I kind of planned, um, I need to do the whole house. So I've, I've got one room I'm trying to get done in January. So I'm kind of perfect. Perfect. Goal each perfect. Month. Like one, like a room a month or something yep. like that. Yep. Yes. Eating That's good. And decluttering and. Yep. And um, what's a good time of day or day of week or like, have you found that you have the energy for that? Because I find that when I'm doing that, I'm either like 
once I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, and I'm like going crazy with it. Yeah. But if I don't feel like it, I really don't want to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Saturdays and Sundays. Sure. Mostly in the morning. Mornings are definitely. Sure. So that's an, you, you know, set up a good way to put a goal together. You're like, I want to get more organized. This is what it looks like to me. It looks like decluttering for somebody mm -hmm. else. It could be something else. Um, and when I, I used to do clutter coaching, actually, a handful of years ago, so I go to people's homes and do that. But mm -hmm. one of the things that's important is you can't organize the stuff you have if you have too much stuff. So you have to get rid of at least a third of what you own, and then you can organize what's left. So you have to get rid of first, then you can kind of organize. You can buy all the organizers in the world. But, but then you determine that um, you want to do your whole house, which is a big, yeah. audacious goal. But then you broke it down into, I'm going to do one room a month, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do it mostly Saturday and Sunday mornings, because that's mm -hmm. when I have the energy, and that's what makes it, you know, I'm not going to attempt it on Thursday nights or whatever it is. Yeah. So, perfect. Very good. Okay, somebody else? A goal? Yeah. I exercise. Okay, that's a totally popular one. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, I retired when I was 55, and I was a postal carrier, so I walked all day. So that was my exercise. So I didn't, yep. didn't have to actually do a lot of stuff, because I did it all day. Yeah. And, I don't have um, that anymore. And so now, it's like I find myself all of a sudden, it's like January, I was going to, okay, I'm going to start working on my arms. And I thought I'm going to start slow. Let's do arms in January. Yeah. I did it for two weeks. I have that sense. Because I just, I, I just like I'm not motivated. Or I have no motivation to keep it up. And yep. it's just like, and then I see somebody on TV and their arms look so nice. I'm like, that's what I need to do. Why can't, I, yeah. I just can't stick with it. Do you know when you see people with, so this has to do with the whole myth of motivation, that we wait to feel motivated to go? You won't ever, by the way. Uh, I was telling you guys I flew in from Mexico. We got back like late last night, and so I'm going to talk about habits tonight. I went to yoga in the gym already today because I was motivated at all. I came with my toothbrush or chapstick or whatever. So I laid some stuff out last night, and I was like, I'm just going to get through, you know, I'm just going to do these things. But it's... Going to yoga on Saturday mornings is one of my anchor habits. It's just something that I've been doing, so I don't even think of you know not doing it. Those people that you see that are like the ripped arms or whatever, they've been going for ten years, not two weeks. You know that's yeah. the difference too. Is yeah. like it's that that's the sustainability piece. Yeah. But often we compare ourselves. We compare our beginning with someone else's middle. Yeah. You know they didn't like just start doing that. And they're probably not lifting eight pound dumbbells. They're doing yeah pull ups and like all this other and stuff. But trainer and for, for yes. sure, yeah. Which trainers are great too. That's a great way right. to hold yourself accountable too. Right. Is just hiring somebody to help because you're not going to not show right. up or right. whatever. I still do that once a week. I have somebody that I just I hired to. I had foot surgery last year, so I hired somebody to help me rehab that. And then I just kind of stuck with them like once a week because so I was like, it's nice not to have to think mm -hmm. once a week and just go and whatever. So. So, so you're an example of somebody that's good at starting, mm -hmm. but then the sustainability yep. part is like, and so do you stop when you don't see results no, just, or like, like I don't feel like, like it? I don't care. Yeah, you don't care. It's like, yeah. I, oh, that looks really nice, but yeah. I just, I can't. You have to do the work yeah, to get there. Yeah, and then there. I thought, okay, if I, like, I always, like, I was like doing those back arm dips. Like, yeah, I, tricep I, dips. Yeah, yeah I was like, I, okay, this is, probably sounds really weird, but I went to the bathroom and I thought, I can do it on the edge of the tub. Yeah. Just sit there and yeah. do it. And I figured, okay, I'll do that, like, whatever. And yeah. I, because I thought if I have it a certain time every yes. day or something. Yeah, that's habit stacking. Or, yep. okay, I'm going to go and, when I go to bed, just do 15 of them each time I go in the bathroom or something. Yep. But that's, <coughs> that never happened either. Yeah. You know I know, pull up our, one of our small bathrooms, and we did that too. And then, but then I, like, the same thing. Like, I was doing it because I was like, oh, this is great. And then, um. A couple times I didn't, and then once you stop, yeah, you yeah. just stop completely, yes. and then it's like ornamental or whatever. Yeah, just pull up bar. Yeah, that your, yeah. That you don't use so. Yeah, so then sustainability for you. So then, then that's breaking it down into smaller pieces and being reasonable. And for you, I would say, not waiting to feel motivated. Mm -hmm. I would say that for everybody. Um, not waiting to feel motivated because you probably won't most days. Mm -hmm. I don't. You know, you have to develop that habit. It's like, what if I asked you, like, um, how do you brush your teeth? Like, you don't, yeah. like, are you waiting to feel motivated to brush your teeth? Yeah, no, we just, yeah. You just right. do it, like it's an anchor habit or right. whatever. I mean, even when I went to the gym before I came here, I wasn't there very long and I didn't do much, but I was like, I need to, I've gone for five days, I need to just go, I need to just show up 
even if I like showed up and like talk with people for 20 I, I just that's like a way to get back into it or whatever right. so um, yeah it's removing the feeling part because mm -hmm. you're not going to feel like it probably so no. yeah um, to all of you don't quit moving you got to work at it yeah, yeah yeah Larry and I fought this not fought I fight just to breathe and what has happened in our lives, now Larry's got to take care of me. And I feel very horrid about it. Uh, so many feelings and stuff, like I've let him down and I can't help people, I can't do all the things, things that you used yeah. to. Sure, yeah. But the thing is, is I can't get that low, um, like nothing yeah. to go on. I have no strength, I have no energy. So this morning I said, we've got to get back to climbing the steps. If that's all I can do and just sit. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're doing and we're going uh, for testing and uh, there's a, a chiropractor, Gunderson, in uh, uh, Rockton, I think it is. And they're helping with a, uh, electrical lights. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I noticed yesterday when Larry was doing the lights that all of a sudden I had tingling all over my body, which I've not felt anything. And that for the breathing, I'm all the way down to 49. You've got to be what, 80 or something like that. So it's really a struggle. So please, please don't do that to yourselves. Yeah. So your advice to everybody is to keep moving. I would, I, yeah, I would agree. So let's let's start with the start, like that idea. And so a lot of us wait for the perfect time, which for whatever reason is January first. And that is hands down my busiest month in the nutrition world. It's just I, I don't really hear from anybody between November fifteenth and the end of December on the nutrition end. Mental health is very busy then. Uh, and you don't hear much from people. And then all of a sudden, sometimes the last couple days of December, or the, definitely that first week of January, people come out of the woodwork for sure. So, but it is, every year it's that all or nothing thinking. And I have to go all in and do, I'm gonna do all the things. And once I stop doing all the things, or I don't do them well enough, then I'm just gonna stop completely. So it's either you're in or you're out. Um, and that's, never going to be successful. So one of the things I say in my practice a lot is like, I, I want you to you know, shoot for 80% of your goals 100% of the time. So that means every day, not hitting 100%, but hitting 80, but every day, you know? So that would be like, if you, your goal was to work out 30 minutes a day and you only hit 24, but you still went, but you hit 24 minutes every day, that would be amazing. You're losing six minutes, but if you have in your mind that if I, if I don't have 30 minutes that I'm not going to go at all, 30 becomes zero. And so think in your head of like, how can I hit 80%? Or maybe there's like three or four new habits you have. Maybe it's like <clears throat> drinking more water or eating more vegetables or, you know, whatever. Maybe drinking more water, eating more vegetables and getting move, 30 minutes of movement in, let's say. But if every day you hit two of those three, and consistently you did that across the year, you would do really great, you know? Um, even if you never moved your body, but you ate vegetables and drank more water every day, like those are, you know, those are great habits. So think of that like 80%-ish. Don't even entertain the idea of 100% because it's harder to maintain, kind of like what you were saying. Um, so this all or nothing thinking usually gets us nothing. So. Um, so thinking of that 8% is better. So um, so what I hear a lot from people is, um, oh, when I get a different job, uh, when things are less busy, that's like never. Um, when I get the right like equipment, I'm gonna build like a home gym. When I lose 20 pounds, which is very interesting because I work with people with nutrition and fitness and they're like, I have to lose 20 pounds and then I'll come see you. I'm like, Wait, what? <laughs> like, let just come to me now and then I'll help you, you know, do that. Um, when my fridge is full of the right foods, I don't know what to eat, but when it's magically like everything's laid out, then I'll be good. Tomorrow becomes next week, becomes next month, becomes like never. Um, and so that's the trap I think a lot of us fall into kind of every January. 
And so that's why I thought it was good to come here the third week in January because I knew if I asked a handful of you where are you at in your resolutions that a lot of people would be like, eh, it's not going so well and we're only three weeks into the year. Um, this, the all or nothing or these reasons that we come up with in our head is often a justification for really doing the work. Um, sitting down and writing workouts or buying cookbooks off of Amazon or making lists of things, we tell ourselves that that's the work we need to do, but the real work is actually cooking the food and eating it and you know, whatever. Um, and so this perfectionism into avoidance and back to perfectionism and back to avoidance, that's kind of our buffer against like probably criticism, embarrassment, comparison. You know, we say comparison's a thief of joy um, because it won't be good enough because we, don't end up going to a yoga class, maybe we register, maybe we even pay it, but we don't end up going because we won't be as flexible or as bendy as everybody else there. And I hear that with people in yoga all the time. But you're going to get bendy and flexible, you're not showing up already doing that or maybe you would need to go, you know? Um, and so the perfectionism and avoidance, that kinda is what keeps us stuck. Um, and that keeps us from growing and thriving and meeting goals even at that 80%. Heck, even at 50%, you know? Um, and so there's no perfect time. There never will be. And so just because it's almost February doesn't mean you can't start and move forward with, with something else. So um, there's this perception too that other people have more time, more money. Other people are more motivated. Um, I'm at the athletic club like six days a week and I get that a lot. Um, I've had people come up to me and say like, God, it must be great to love exercising. Like I see you here all the time. Like I, I, I wish I loved it like you did. I don't at all. <laughs> I don't. Um, um, but it's just, um, I do it. So that's like an anchor habit for me. I just get there and do it. Not many times have I walked in the door there and not done anything, you know. Um, I don't want to go. I'm going late usually like after work. I just want to go home. I'm hungry, whatever um, I don't want to go. I'm not motivated and so that's that whole like myth of motivation or me waiting to like feel like going Because I would say most of the time I do not sometimes once I'm there it feels better and for sure once I leave <laughs> It's great because I know it's done and that gives me this energy for kind of like my second shift or like kids and all that stuff when I get home um, and for some people it's early in the morning, but well, we all think that everybody has more motivation than us, more money, more time, uh, more information, and it's not true, and most often we're not starting at the beginning. So we're starting somewhere in the middle, we're jumping too far ahead. If you've never exercised a day in your life and you sign up for a 5 a.m. spin class and you've never gotten up before seven, like that's probably a bad idea. Like it's probably not gonna happen. I did that by the way. I think it, if you guys have heard me talk before, you've probably heard my story about how I wanted to be a morning person one time. Didn't work out very well. So I did it though and then my husband was like, when are you gonna stop doing this because you're really crabby? <laughs> so uh, I did the two weeks I signed up. It was like 6.30 in the morning or something like that. So I was like, morning people seem amazing and I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get my workout done at the you know, beginning of the day and then at the rest of the day and I'm super sluggish and I didn't really honor my natural cortisol with them, which is at night. So I work out at 8 p.m. and I still feel great. So that's just what I do and I don't try to fit in anymore. Uh, but there is no perfect time. And so these moments will keep going throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month. And you essentially have to like make your own moments and kind of grab them and just make it happen, even if you don't feel like it. So, um, and then you start kind of stacking these moments or these habits on top of each other. That's what we call habit stacking. That's like when I talk to people taking supplements or vitamins, they're like, well, I'm not good at taking it. I'm like, well, let's find a way to make you good at it. You can be good at it. Let's put it next to your coffee that you have in the morning or your the whole brushing your teeth thing. You know, you don't think about brushing your teeth. Maybe don't even think about making coffee when you wake up or whatever it is. So I have people like stack their water, you know, next to their coffee, stack their supplements next to their water, which is next to their coffee. You know, suddenly you've got these like five habits that you do every morning. Maybe it's you wake up, you brush your teeth, you wash your face, you stretch. Maybe that's a new one. Um, 
and maybe you're drinking coffee, but then you're adding water and whatever else in there. So, um, so it's kind of like, you know, stacking those things. Um, and so starting means just initiating some action too. And that can be a little thing. Now this is where people get stuck though, because maybe people want to cook healthy. They don't maybe know totally what that means, but um, so they buy cookbooks. So that's starting an initiative. I would agree, that's an action item for sure. But don't buy 30 cookbooks and not open them or use them or you know whatever. So it's kind of taking that next step. So starting means committing to some sort of choice, one or the other. That's you know putting one foot in the other, and it's probably doing something that's going to make you uncomfortable. Um, that's probably the difference. So maybe you're comfortable sitting on the couch reading through cookbooks or like doing all of that, but you're not comfortable um, maybe shopping at basics here because you haven't before, or you're not comfortable um, using tiger nut flour, coconut flour, or some sort of different you know thing. And so then you don't. And so it's getting started and doing something, it's probably doing something different. Um, maybe it is like you were talking about like working out in the bathroom. Maybe it's hiring a personal trainer. Maybe you haven't done that before and it makes you nervous or anxious or whatever because it's something a little bit different. But maybe that would hold you accountable and maybe that's worth the investment. <laughs> work with people on cooking a lot too. People are, I, most people I work with are like busy running around working full time plus sometimes kids, whatever. Um, I added a new section to my website at the beginning of this year actually on uh, meal delivery services. So we have a couple good local options in here, Kate's Clean Eats, but there's a ton all over and um, they're going to cost you more than if you cooked food at home. But if you don't have a lot of time and if you, after so many years, said that you're going to cook healthy and you still haven't, maybe you should do a meal delivery service. Maybe just for lunches or dinners or whatever it is, but maybe that it's a good investment if you're using it and if it's working for you. So, you know, it doesn't have to be kind of a certain way, but that could be a good idea too. So, so you really need to learn to push through and embrace resistance. If you say you're eating more vegetables, broccoli, let's say, and you never cooked broccoli before, so you buy some broccoli, you go to the store, you buy some broccoli, you cook some broccoli, you overcook the crap out of it. And you eat it and you're like, this tastes horrible. I'm never eating broccoli again, vegetables suck. When maybe you just need to try it again, maybe you prefer it raw, maybe you just cooked it too much, maybe by frozen, whatever. Um, but see what I did there? It's kind of like I never eat broccoli again, but then I swore off the rest of the vegetable family too. And maybe you don't like broccoli, but then maybe you should try Brussels sprouts or cauliflower or asparagus or lettuce or whatever it is. But that's the problem. We start with these things and the minute something's hard, uncomfortable, doesn't taste good, uh, we muscle soreness, we start working out, uh, then we stop because it's uncomfortable. But that sticky point of when you're uncomfortable is when you need to keep going, um, that's what's hard for most of us. And so people who have those like ripped arms or like the, you know, the things that we're comparing ourselves with, those people are uncomfortable every day you know, in some regard. And I don't mean they're like uncomfortable, like in tons of pain or like all that other stuff, but they are doing probably lots of things every day that are making them uncomfortable. Lots of things that they don't want to do. And they're in, some of those are little things, some of those are big things, depending on who you're comparing yourself with. But um, they're doing those things and they're uncomfortable. I did not want to go to yoga this morning. I did not want to go to the gym this morning. Um, I mean, I didn't really want to get out of bed or, you know, brain's fuzzy or whatever. So those were like, I did a whole bunch of uncomfortable things this morning, but those are those anchor habits that I, you know, didn't think about not doing. In fact, I signed myself up for the yoga class like two weeks ago and I made sure, because I knew when I came back from vacation, I wasn't going to feel like going, but I was like, I'm just, I'm going to go, you know, and I didn't think about canceling. So, um, so you have to push through the resistance. So the broccoli is like, that's a good example I like to use. Um, and that's how it feels sometimes. It feels uncomfortable. In fact, I would say it feels uncomfortable most of the time. Um, and so expect that resistance and expect it to not feel great. And then I would say get support. So then maybe that's like working with me with nutrition or maybe it's um, hiring a trainer or maybe it's getting meal delivery. I would call that support too, whatever it is. But knowing that you can't do it by yourself and then if you're gonna invest in that, that investing means it could mean time, it could mean money, it could mean some of both, 
but we can't pretend that we can do it all by ourselves either. Or it's getting a partner to go to the gym with, or um, I have a couple of moms I work with where they're batch cooking together on Sundays. And so they like take turns at someone else so they're not messing up the same kitchen every week, but they get together and batch cook, they're on similar diets, they get together and just batch cook all these meals for their families and you know, cook together, split it up and they're done and it's super efficient and, and social too, like a good you know, connection piece too. Um, so sometimes it's, it's good to hire somebody who can call you out on your procrastination or your perfectionism mindset um, or your information cruising or your waffling, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that. You really just gotta pick something and go with it. Um, so revise your expectations so you're not doing all the things the first of the year. Carve out time, even if it's imperfect, even if it's 24 minutes versus 30. Number three, just start, do something. Even if you, maybe you like spent all this time writing all these workouts or like researching, you, like your printer ran out of paper because you print all these workouts. And then the first day, January 1st, you go to the gym and you're like, I'm gonna work out. And you leave all of it on the kitchen table. You show up at the gym and you're like, well, I can't do it because I left all my plans on the kitchen table. Yeah, you can. What could you do? Jump on the treadmill and just walk for 30 minutes. You know, you don't have all those workouts. You can get them tomorrow. But the mistake would be when you pull up in the parking lot and you realize you forgot your plan, so pull out and leave, you know? Or if you're like me, if I drive home and go to get them, I'm probably not coming back. So, um, so think about that. When you overcook your broccoli or you forget your grocery list or you forget your um, these workouts that you printed out instead of stopping just actually start you know and do something number three number four expect resistance it's not gonna feel great smooth uh, comfortable it's not gonna feel comfortable and then number five get support so revise your expectations carve out time even if it's not perfect even try to think through like what might be your barriers or obstacles. When I start working with people, I ask them, this is gonna be uncomfortable. I'm gonna ask you to do things that you probably haven't done before. I'm gonna ask you to eat things that you may have even eaten before. Um, sleep, kind of all these things. What's gonna be your barrier? Let's talk about that ahead of time. What has gotten in the way before? Because whatever's gotten in the way before is probably gonna get away, you know, get in the way again. It's gonna be the same thing, even though if it's a different habit. So just getting started. Does anybody have any questions about that piece, about the start part? How many of you are good starters, but not good sustainers? Like you get started, yeah. This year I started good, but usually, no. I you don't. get started and I certainly can't sustain. Okay, so yeah, because like I said, some people are good starters and they can't sustain. Other people just kind of never get started. The people who don't get started are usually those who uh, want it to be perfect or a certain way, basically. Um, and then, like I said, there's other people who get started that are just like, I can't. And those are often habits that are end up being, we, like, we took on too much. Like my 6 a.m. spin class or whatever. So, um, so let's talk about then sustaining. So to sustain, you need a system. You need a plan. You need a system that works for you. And so you probably have lots of systems already. Um, so grocery shopping is the first thing that comes to mind. I have a system for grocery shopping. You might have something different. I literally have my list in my purse here because I'm gonna do it after I talk to you guys. I don't have anything fancy. I don't have it on my phone. I did it last night in bed when we came from Mexico. My meal planning and grocery system is um, throughout the week. Obviously, I like publish recipes and do all this professionally. But even if you didn't. I'm searching for recipes throughout the week, just like you are. I'm sharing them, publishing them, whatever. And um, I put them in one place throughout the week. So then Friday night, I usually sit down and look at all the recipes I've gathered throughout the week. I look at what groceries we already have, so I'm not wasting food, pantry, fridge, freezer, and building meals off of those things, and then I'm adding some of these new recipes. And I'm always testing recipes too, so I just can decide what to put in the meal plans and what looks good but doesn't, you know, taste good. I'm sure you guys have had that before. So Friday night I plan our meals throughout the week. I gather information. Saturday I come here every Saturday and get my groceries, usually like early afternoon. 
and then I go home and kind of lay everything out, defrost a couple things, you know, it's usually me. And then Sunday I get up, but not super early. I make my family brunch and I stay in the kitchen and prep it because I'm already in the kitchen and I already made brunch, there's a habit stacking for you. So I'm over here making waffles or whatever for my kids and then I just crank out some of my meals. I do batch cooking so I'm not making something different all the time. But that's habit stacking right there and that's a system that I have and I build around that. If we leave for the weekend, I try to think ahead and think, okay, how am I gonna get this done? I own my own business, so I have some flexibility. I'll say, I'm not gonna see clients till noon on Monday, because then Monday morning, you know, I'll get my groceries done and we get home and Monday I'll cook or whatever it is, but that's a system. Um, and I literally just walk in here with a paper list. Sometimes it's on my phone, but mostly it's not. But, and it's nothing exciting or even legible, probably, if you were to look at it, but it's something, it doesn't need to be fancy. So systems really matter. Um, when you're stressed out, it powers down your thinking part of your brain and it turns on your emotional brain. Your emotional brain goes to Starbucks and gets a frappuccino because you're tired and you're like, bah, whatever. Your thinking brain thinks ahead and would have planned meals or your beverages or you know whatever it is or maybe got better sleep the night before. And so it's harder to keep priorities in mind when you're tired and stressed and when you, your thinking brain is like not functioning. Um, and so one of the things that sometimes people do or what I talk about a lot is automation. And so that's building those anchor habits, but it might be automating easy things in your life. <clears throat> Any of you take supplements or meds? Do you have one of those like pill sorter things? Yeah, so I took that on vacation because I, want to make sure I was feeling good on vacation and I had it all kind of like laid out and then I didn't have to, I didn't have to think at all every morning about, okay, grab my vitamin D, which I didn't bring my vitamin D on vacation because we had some, but I'm going to grab this, I'm going to grab my digestive enzymes and whatever. I didn't have to think about all that because I just put it all together and just pop them during breakfast. And so that's automation. Uh, automating wardrobes. Those of you that work in medical field or you have like a, you know, something that you generally wear to work that's like generally the same. Um, automating that, like if you wear scrubs or whatever, it's nice because you don't have to think about what to pick out to wear because you're wearing the same thing. Or um, picking out your clothes ahead of time for the whole week. I've done that before too. Um, helps you make sure you do laundry, but maybe I'm picking out five pairs of pants and five tops or whatever. And it's just all laid out so when I wake, wake up in the morning, because I'm not a morning person, then I don't have to think it's all, it's just done when I'm grabbing it. So think of things in your life that you can Automate. That's why I'm trying to put this together, this meal planning app too, because then it's automated and it's shooting your stuff and you don't have to think as much something else, someone else is automating that for you. Even hiring like personal trainer, I was talking about with you is, that's kind of automation actually, because you're just showing up and you don't have to think because they're kind of telling you what to do. Um, so it's nice to be able to do, you know, some of that for sure. You can only make so many good decisions in a day. Really, you get tired, you know, by the end of the day or you're just like, I'm done. And like I said, that's when the frappuccino brain, I'm gonna call that, takes over. Because you're just like, maybe you, a lot of people start really good in the beginning of the day, and it's usually towards the end of the day or once you get home, and then all hell breaks loose because you're just, you didn't plan that part in advance, or, or something threw you off in the middle of the day, which happens every day for me, I don't know about you guys, but every day something happens. I, whatever, I wore the wrong shoes the other day and stepped into snow, so then I had to like, take extra time to like get the snow off the inside of my shoe, you know, and then you're five minutes behind, I have a client that runs over, you, um, you know, you miss your like food break maybe in between something or whatever, so then you're hungry, you know, whatever it is, things happen. You get a call from your kid or from your sister or whatever, and you gotta, you know, you gotta switch gears throughout the day. All the time though, it's not like this, it's not linear. So um, you can only make so many good decisions in the day. So as much as you can automate, as much habits as you can develop, really simple ones, and ones that matter is what I would say too. So when I work with people the first couple months on nutrition stuff, we literally just work on supplements and food and that is it. And they'll be like, I'm tired, I need to work my sleep, I need to exercise, I, you know, I need to do all these things. And I'm like, that's great, let's make a list. We are literally only gonna do two things to start though for a couple months. And then those are gonna become automated your meal prep habit, your um, taking your vitamins, whatever. 
So those have become automated, so then we can add a third habit, but not for a couple months. I think people underestimate how long it really takes to sometimes make some of these changes too. That's why I like to work with people for at least six months because it is not a 30 day thing. You'll probably give me a lot of energy for 30 days and then when you start to fall apart, then I still wanna be there for you because that's when we're gonna add some of those other things. The other thing I would say is if you're eating well, taking some decent supplements, you will feel, if you are following the regimen per se, you'll feel really good actually in about two months. Good enough that then you may have the motivation and the energy to add the third habit. But I'm not gonna tell somebody who comes into my office who says they need to exercise, but they're also really tired. I am not gonna tell a tired person potentially to go take on some new exercise, you know, regimen. So, because it would be hard to keep up. So internally I had to figure out what's going on with somebody to make, you know, to get them more energy naturally so then they can kind of take it on for sure. So, uh, so the more decisions that you make in a day that you have to think about, the more fatigued your brain gets. And then that makes each successive decision harder and harder and then that's when stuff falls apart for sure. And you're probably making more decisions in a day than you realize. Little things, right? What shoes should I wear? Um, what protein should I defrost for breakfast, depending on if you plan to meal or not? Um, you know, what shirt should I wear? Should I get out of bed or should I stay in bed? What TV show should I watch tonight? Like, they're little things, but you don't think about those things as decisions. And so, as much as you can kind of automate, then that's good too. I don't watch a ton of TV, TV but um, it, this will sound really funny to you guys, but a few years ago, I <laughs> that was one of my goals was to actually like, instead of working until like 11 o'clock at night and working all this stuff, I was like, I'm gonna shut down everything, put my phone away or whatever at like 10 or 10.30 and I'm gonna find some show to watch. Like people watch shows. Like it, I, I couldn't connect with people who watched shows because I didn't. And so my husband and I usually agree, like we've shared interests on what to watch. And so it is automated what I watch at night now, at like 10, 30 or 11, basically. I like brush my teeth, get my pajamas, whatever, sit in bed, turn show. We like negotiate what shows ahead of time. We usually try to pick something that'll last like months, you know, like a series or whatever. Um, and so then that's even automated. Because I don't know about you guys, if you live in the spouse and you're like, let's watch a movie tonight. I don't know how long it takes you to decide on what you want to make. It takes us like an hour and by the time you made the decision, it's like, now we can't watch a movie anymore because it's like 10 o'clock and I don't want to start a movie at 10 o'clock even though I'm a night person. My husband will fall asleep for sure 20 minutes and then I'm mad and then that's a whole problem too. So, so I even, I have movies automated even on my phone. So when I see a movie that looks good, either one of us, we add it in like a shared list. I have a shared grocery list on here too, because now my kid's like 17, and so when she needs food or she thinks she needs food, then she puts it on the grocery list, and then she can get it, I can get it, whatever. But anytime I see a movie that I want to watch, I we have a shared app, we put it in our phone, and then I'm like, do you want to watch a movie tonight? Yeah, quick. We just go to list and watch a couple trailers and pick one, you know, within five or ten minutes. So we talk about like health habits and automating, but that's another automation. It's just even like your leisure time can be automated. Maybe you, I talk with couples who have like a, whatever, a date on Thursdays. And so that's automated. Maybe they have to decide what they're doing, but like every Thursday they do something, they block that time out, they know. Maybe it's not every week for you, maybe that's a lot, maybe it's once a month. But whatever it is, even me coming to speak here is automated. I have the topics laid out for the whole, whole year, I have all the topics laid out. They're all done ahead of time. And so I know if you ask me what I'm talking about in March, I can tell you. Um, and so automating as much as you can um, is helpful. So those are those anchor habits. So when I talked about automation, it's kind of those anchor habits you don't have to think about. Yeah. Okay, of course, okay, because I'm retired. Uh-huh. Every day is different. I'll okay. Say, say, hey, you want to go out for breakfast yeah. on Tuesday? Yeah, fine, which I, is great. Yeah, yeah, and then my daughter says, well, can you watch my grand, you know, granddaughter on Thursday? So nothing is a schedule, like when I was working. Yeah, I mean, it was so much easier. Right. You get up, you, yeah, it you is. Your coffee, take your vitamins, you do yep. this. And now it's like, oh, I go go have breakfast, and then it's three hours later. Oh, I forgot to take my vitamins this right. morning. How do you yep. when you don't have a working schedule? So I'm gonna talk about that actually oh, a little okay, bit towards sorry. the end, but no, that's okay. You would benefit then from something I call like time blocking. You have to almost bring your some organization structure back into your life. Not maybe like you had before, but maybe you have to block out time that you will say no to some of those things or you won't do some of those things because 
the first hour of your day is you know whatever it is or you always exercise at two o'clock or whatever not that that stuff can't be flexible but it's probably bringing in back some of structure um i do i hear that a lot from retired folks is that all of a sudden they're not doing all these things and they have all the time they have more time than they had before why am i not doing these things because i have all the time but yeah there's less structure there's less um there's nothing like sort of um, telling your brain like, oh, you have to take your vitamins because you just finished your cup of coffee or whatever, you know? Um, and so it's bring, you have to find a way to bring those things back. So I'll talk to you a little about time blocking because yeah, that's a good question. So what's important to you right now? Decide what really matters. Um, and I would say, You can make a list of 10 if you want. I do that. I make a list all the time. I write personal professional goals. I have a spiral notebook. I write them down every year and I just try to make headway towards all of them. But I pick one that I'm gonna nail. I'm literally gonna do this one thing. I'm gonna do it really well. And the rest of it, I'm gonna try to make some progress in. But if it's not perfect, you know, it's okay. What drop, if you ask yourself what's important, you also have to ask yourself what's not. Is there a habit that maybe you've been hanging on to that really is not serving you anymore? Some people, when they go to a gym or whatever, they keep track of all their, how much weight they lifted and their exercises and whatever. But if that's a lot to keep up on, or what are you doing with that information? If you're not doing anything with it, then maybe you shouldn't do it. When I worked at social services for 20 plus years, um, we had a new CEO and we had all, all the directors and executive directors have been doing these executive reports of like all the, you remember Rebecca? Like all these services. I had, served, I had hundreds of employees, millions of dollars, stuff all over the state. So we, we somehow had to like compartmentalize it for this large organization, like what was happening like what was happening in these group homes, what was happening, whatever. And so we would write these executive summaries every month and we'd turn them into our CEO. I've been doing that for years. And it was good for me, helped me keep organized, whatever. So then we got a new CEO and he sits us around the table and he was like, you guys have been sending these, you know, these reports to me. I've been here for six months. And uh, he's like, what do we, he's like, I haven't read any of them. <laughs> and uh, we were like, oh, awesome. <laughs> Oh, he's like, how long do these take you? I'm like, oh, it takes me a better part of an afternoon, like a few hours, like every month, because I got to get summaries from all my people, we get summaries from their people, you know, and I'm kind of trying to condense it. For him. He's like, I'm not reading them, just so you know. And um, it was in the middle of that meeting, and he's like, well, what do you guys do with them? Or like, how are they helpful? And we were like, I don't know, we just give them to you. He's like, all right, we're going to stop doing them right now. Like, don't do these anymore. And people were like, oh, that's great. So we've just been doing them but they weren't serving any purpose. So is there things, is there habits, is there things that you're doing that either are not good for you or they're just kind of wasting your time? So if they're wasting your time, then those are the things. So in order to identify the things that matter to you, you almost have to look at the things that maybe you're doing because you gotta get that time from somewhere, right? That's why I say meal delivery services are great too because if you are not, you, you want to cut back your cooking or if you're working, whatever, like that's a great way to do it. But again, people will come to me when I suggest that, they'll be like, but it costs so much money. I'm like, well, <laughs> it's either that or the time to cook. I mean, time is money and whatever, you're paying somebody to do all that for you, so either you want to do it or you don't. Uh, do your current actions line up with what your priorities are? If you want to work on your arms, are you doing arm exercises every day, or are you, you said you were not anymore, but, or have you carved out that time that no one else can get from you that that's what you're gonna do, is work on your upper body or whatever. If someone calls and <coughs> asks you to brunch, is that during the time that you've carved out to do arms, and can you negotiate the time with them? So you're still doing something with them, but you can still get your stuff, or can you tweak the time that you're doing your arm Tricep exercise. I'm like probably always gonna remember triceps on the bathtub now. Like, <laughs> it's like a, it's like a really vivid thing for me now. I remember and it try, but like yeah, I've seen all those like you can do them on the chair. You can do yeah, everywhere. Just, it's more comfortable. Now. For sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm like really gonna go home and try it now. So, um, but 
But in order to decide what's important, you have to decide what's not important anymore or what's not working for you. Um, or what are you putting effort into that's working for you or that's important and, and, and what are you not? Second question. So what's important? That's my first question. Second question, what were some of your old systems that worked for you before? So I always ask people and they start with me, how have you met some of your other goals in the past? Sometimes I see people with weight loss and they're like, I lost 80 pounds 10 years ago and, I'm, and then they gained back, right? I'm like, well, what worked during that time? And it may or may not have been healthy weight loss. That's a whole other talk, right? But they'll say, well, I had somebody checking in with me every week, or I had these meals ready, delivered, or you know, whatever it is. I'm like, ooh. So that gives me information on how to make sure that they're successful again this time. We all work differently. Our personalities are all different. What works for somebody? Some people like all the information right away. Other people are overwhelmed by too, you know, too much information. We just gotta you know, take it off in little snippets. And so, is it blocking off time to exercise? Is that what worked for you in the past? Is it socially, like doing some of your healthy habits with other people? Did that work for you? Hold you accountable? Okay. Um, is it eating vegetables with every meal? That's how you increase your energy or lost some weight because you just added vegetables every meal? Okay, so maybe we're going back to doing that. Uh, was it sleep for you? Was it, even though you didn't want to go to bed, that's me, then you make yourself go to bed because you will regret it in the morning and then you'll be like, I'm gonna do this differently today and then you stay up again and then you don't and you know, whatever. Um, I hear that a lot, by the way, from um, working moms who don't, who that's the only piece they finally get at the end of the night and that's me too, that's exactly how I do it. It's like 10 o'clock, finally it's quiet in my house, I'm not talking to any people, I like sitting in my pajamas, and then I wanna, I don't wanna sleep because I want to read a book or do some other things. And so that's like, you know, I finally get time to myself. And so that's what I hear from a lot of times people are staying up because they just wanna watch a movie or Netflix or, you know, they just wanna do something that's not for somebody else. And so that's a lot of times an issue. So what, what systems in the past once helped making some of your goals easier for you? Looking at what those were, maybe making a list did you block out time to research recipes? So I told you guys I do that throughout the week. And I don't even block out time for that. I just like see one, social media, cookbook, whatever, and I like save it. I just, but I put it in the same place so it's not all over the place. That's the other thing I hear from people. They're like, oh, I sent myself something, a messenger, then I text myself, then I email myself another one, then I made a copy, and this one I shoved in the drawer. Then on Friday, you go to plan your meals, you can't find any of those. So putting it in one place. Um, how you would plan your meals for the week, I give you an example of how I did that. Um, do you, uh, if you want your family to eat more vegetables, you have to buy the vegetables first. But I found, and I hear this a lot, just buying the vegetables doesn't make, doesn't mean that they're going to get eaten. Have you ever like throwing away like kale in the back of your fridge? Cause you're like, well, I bought that, but I didn't know what I was going to do with it. But I just thought if I bought it, then we would eat it. No, not necessarily. So cucumbers, carrots, and peppers are like the three veggies that my kids like. But they won't eat a whole pepper sitting in the fridge unless I cut it up at the beginning of the week or cucumbers, whatever. We're just more, we're lazy. Like we're less likely to, they're like, I gotta chop that pepper or that carrot, so I'm not gonna do it. Carrots last forever, by the way, chopped in the fridge, like 10 days. So I'll get five pounds of carrots for basics here, by the way, because they're a great deal. And I rinse them quick and chop like half the bag. We go through about five pounds of carrots, believe it or not, in my house like almost every week just because everybody likes them. They're good for my stomach, they're whatever. They're just good. Um, but they last forever. And so if I pre-chop things ahead of time, then people are more likely to, to eat those. Um, is your kitchen organized-ish? So in the beginning part of my business, I was doing kitchen purges too. When I was talking about the clutter coaching, I did it with people's closets a lot, but I did with their kitchens a lot. So I'd give them this whole like protocol before I would come in of boxes and you know, emptying everything out of their cabinets and we'd clean everything and then we'd only put like, you know, half of it back, we'd donate some, sell some, whatever. Um, how many spatulas do you have? Do you have two? Do you have twelve? What do you need with twelve spatulas? I purged this um I've told this story before, and uh, I always ask her, I'm like, I tell your story like almost every time I speak, is that okay? And she's like, oh, that's great. So I was doing this pantry purge with a couple um, on the east side here, medium-sized house, very small kitchen though. 
And it was only the two of them. And um, they had lived there for, I don't know, 10 years. And so we were purging our pantry and uh, I brought out seven open jars of pea butter because every time she went grocery shopping, she just bought peanut butter, but she didn't check to see if they were out first. But then it just got shoved to the back, you know, like they had one of these like narrow, but like deep pantries. Those are the worst because you lose stuff in the back. So I said, I just, you know, you have seven jars of peanut butter here, but probably more like two, you know, full ones. And she's like, oh my gosh, how did that happen? Whatever. Um, they were two people, no kids. <clears throat> she collect glasses every time she went somewhere. She was like, I just love wine glasses and people would buy them as gifts. And then she'd travel on vacation and get a glass and you know, all these things. And, um, and she was like five one. So she had a lot of these glasses in the top of her cabinet, but couldn't reach them because she needed like a stairs. And then that again is more work if you want to like go get the glasses. So why bother? So I'm five, six ish, whatever. And so I'm reaching I'm like, what are you? And she was like, Oh, I don't even know what's up there. So I said, we're going to take all these out and uh, kept taking them out. And she was like, I'm really embarrassed. I'm like, Nope, this is why I'm here. Made all these glasses. So two people retired. How many glasses do you think you need in your kitchen? What was like reasonable? How many glasses do you need? You need a wine glass and you got coffee cups. What do you need? Six. Six, okay, yeah. How about like 141? Somewhere in there, right? Oh, wow. But she had no idea she had that many. Their house was not messy. It wasn't like a, some boarding situation. It wasn't like that. It's just one glass every three, four weeks became. And so my classic story about her also is that she had these, and if you guys have been here before, you've probably heard this, but it applies to so many things. She had these Moscow <coughs> field glasses. Oh. And uh, I'm up there, like standing on her countertop, and they're full of dust. And she's like, oh, I love those. I said, um, how many years have you lived in this house? 10. Um, how many times has somebody come over and asked for a Moscow mule? Never. But if they do, I'm gonna have the right class. Oh, right. You know, but you, but I'm like, um, if I ever wanted a Moscow meal and you didn't have the right glass, I wouldn't turn it down, you know what I mean? But she had those because it was like just in case. So if you hear some people in the essentialism or minimalism field when we talk about just in case, when you start saying just in case with clothes, spatulas, peanut butter, glasses, whatever, you probably won't need it. So don't get into the just in case trap of like keeping some of those things. So make sure that your, if nutrition is goal of yours, make sure that you're using everything that you own in your kitchen and that you get rid of anything that you're not. And that it's all clean, that you can reach it. If you're five one, don't put stuff on the top that you need to get to because you won't, because it's a little extra work. We have to make our habits that we want to follow super easy. We have to lay our vitamins out for ourselves with a coffee. Don't put them in a way in the cabinet because that's more work. You have to open the cabinet, you gotta get out all the stuff. On Sunday, sit down and put them all in your little sorter or whatever it is. So it's kind of like doing the work ahead of time. During the week, I work long hours. I would not just like make lunch for myself in the morning. That's the me not be the morning person. But I have it all done because I take a couple hours on Sunday. So it literally takes me like 60 seconds to grab my meals, shove them in my lunch bag and, you know, go. So it's being honest with yourself about what you're really going to do. If you've tried the same thing over and over again and you haven't mastered the habit, you probably need a different habit or you need to approach it a little bit differently. Um, so the next question is then after all of that, what systems would work for you? Now, if you look at some of the stuff you used to do in the past, you look at what's not working, um, you know, is it packing your, maybe you're, you're, you keep you, maybe you work and you keep grabbing lunch instead of making it yourselves. And so like the choices that you're making, grabbing lunch aren't that great. So you're like, I'm gonna start bringing lunch to work. But are you gonna cook it in the morning? Do you have the groceries to cook it? Did you plan it? Did you, you know, whatever. So batch cooking and making lunch for the week, that makes sense. So you can just pack it the night before and then you'll have it. So if you are not going to join a gym or a yoga studio and you wanna work out at home, do you have equipment? We have a small little gym in my basement that we built when we built our house and um, I never use it. It is, it's wasted. I used it during COVID when everything was shut down. But other than that, I need to go where other people are for accountability. And then like my cat's down there, kids are asking questions, I have to do laundry, like I can't 
I can't focus at home. I have nice equipment and I can't. And so that's just one of those things in my head. I thought, oh, it'll be great. We live on the country. It's a little bit farther to the gym. Maybe I'm not going to go. I'll just do it at home. But I totally, I totally didn't. I think lots of people do that. You know how you get like great, everybody gets treadmills in January and then you hang your clothes on it by February and it just becomes this like thing, you know? Yeah. That's why if you want a treadmill, look on Marketplace like mid-February because everybody's getting rid of their treadmills because everybody thought they would use them and they don't, you know? Um, or Peloton or something fancy or whatever. So yeah, think of what you can let go of and that'll help you decide what to keep. Cause you can only, again, your brain can only handle so much. So you gotta prioritize a little bit. You might need to shift your attention to a different um, part of your health. Maybe you were focusing on like um, cardio or movement or whatever and this happened to me when I had my foot surgery. I had to kind of stop all the stuff that I was doing and then when I healed, I had to focus on flexibility more. I hadn't been focusing on that before, but I needed to because I wasn't walking on it for a while, so my hips were all off or whatever. I needed to go to the chiropractor. I need to focus on just mobility and flexibility. Shift for a little bit and then go back with some of that stuff. And so what new systems, what old systems worked for you before that you can now, that you need to bring back? And then what new systems maybe haven't you tried before? Have you tried batch cooking before? Um, if you haven't done that, maybe that's a system that you could create. Um, so systems around, I kind of categorize these. Daily schedule, do you have consistent wake up times, meal times, exercise times, uh, bed, you know, bed times? So for you, like bringing structure in is like trying to achieve some regularity or consistency with maybe those types of things. Like maybe it's not exactly 10 a.m. you're gonna do your bathtub and arm exercises, but maybe it's like generally in this kind of block. It's like blocking that time out ahead of time. So it's bringing some of that structure back that you had before. Um, your surroundings, uh, your kitchen space, how many spatulas do you have, how much peanut butter do you have open, how many glasses do you have, like shrinking that a little bit and making that less. Or if you're gonna work out at home, do you have a space to work out at home? Do you have a mat, do you have some weights, do you have anything? A lot of times we set goals and we say, now you did a good job when you said like, I'm gonna be more organized because sometimes I ask people, I'm like, I'm gonna be more organized. I'm like, how are you gonna do that? I don't know. You know, it's like three weeks in the year, but you didn't really develop a plan or kind of action steps to do that. So your schedule, your surroundings, uh, do you need reminders? Do you need little text reminders? This meal planning app that I'm working on, one of the things I'm putting in there, if you want, you can schedule it whenever you want. Is that Friday or whatever day, like for me, it's gonna send me a reminder that says, plan your meals, you know, at like 8 p.m. Saturday, it'll send me a reminder to get my groceries. Sunday, and defrost my meat, maybe Saturday night, and then Sunday, it'll send me a reminder to batch cook, and then Wednesday, it'll send me a reminder to defrost the second half of my meals, because I, you know, froze half or whatever. But maybe you need to put reminders, or maybe it's just post-it notes for you, I don't know what it is, or, um, you know, now we, we have, one of the things about, that's nice about having phones is we can have these, Reminders. You may turn them off and then go to the next thing. So you have to decide how you want to do that. But um, to-do lists, I like to-do lists is usually what works for me too. I don't put stuff in my phone. If I think of something that I don't want to forget just on the way here I did, I like voice text email myself basically. So at the end of the night, I have all these random emails and they're all from me. Uh, but they're things I didn't want to forget. But then I can move my attention elsewhere because I got it out of my brain and put it somewhere. And I just put it... So anytime I want to send a reminder to myself, I put it in my personal email, not my work one, and then it's all there. And then at the end of the night, I just sit down and like basically transfer that to my to-do list. But most often I'm thinking of stuff while I'm driving, so I can't write stuff down, and so I've done that. Um, planning, do you need a plan? Um, do you need like a two-week meal prep or a grocery plan or a workout plan, like somebody to do that for you? Like maybe just need a plan. Most people think they need a plan though, but they don't. But um, or they need a plan and they need the action part. So once you, you know, once you make the plan, then you got to do the thing. Um, but maybe you need a plan. Maybe you need support. Maybe you need to hire a trainer. Maybe you need to hire somebody for nutrition. Maybe you need to, you know, work out with a friend or do something like that. Um, routine. So you would ask about kind of that piece. I think it's like bringing back the routine, some routines that you lost, and creating some structure where you lost that. Um, when is your best time of the day? Most energy? Late afternoon. Afternoon? Yeah, I'm not a morning person. Yeah, me either. So, I, yeah, afternoon's better for me too. So, I, I wouldn't then for you, if you're working on arm exercises, I probably wouldn't do that in the morning because you're less likely to follow through with it. 
I go to yoga in the morning, but you'll never see me at the athletic club in the morning, ever. There's people that go there, I've been there 25 years. There's people probably that are members there that I've never seen, I don't know who they are, because they go in the morning and I go at night. Um, making your most important goals, setting those up during the time that you have the energy to do that. Um, exercising is interesting because people will say you need to do it at the beginning of the day to get it over with. And I think some people are, I think that's great in general because you got the whole day to talk yourself out of it. I've definitely done that before. But if you don't have the energy to do that or you don't feel great in the morning, like I have super low blood pressure, so in the morning, me exercising in any kind of intensity besides taking a walk or maybe doing yoga class, forget it. Because I don't feel good. Yeah. I've tried that. I so have I. Yeah, I've heard. For, it sucks. Yeah. yeah. To me, I'm like, oh, this yeah. is horrible. Mm -hmm. And I can do that same routine at night and feel awesome. Right. I'm exactly the yeah. same. So stop it. Like, don't, don't do it in the morning. Um, but you have to carve that time out yes. then and do that. Or maybe you have to find somebody that's like a night owl and do it them or whatever. It's interesting because I, I don't have a workout prior to that, so I do it all on my own. But when we were gone these last five days and Mexico, I went back to yoga this morning, like three of the women were like, where were you? But I'll go with them. But we all are on the same routine. I go, sat I go every Saturday pretty much unless we're traveling. And so it's funny because I'm like, I didn't think anybody, I just like slip in and go and slip out, maybe chat a little bit then. But like no one knows that I'm here or not. Yeah, they do. When I went to the athletic club too, I'm there all the time. You know, I've been there for so many years. So, but I walk in at the front desk, they're like, welcome back, Sarah. I'm like, first of all, this feels like really nice. Um, like first of all, but second of all, I was like, how did you, I, it's like five days. Like it wasn't a long time. I didn't, you know, move for six months and come back. They noticed, which is also really good customer service, by the way. So, um, so let's end with like, just talking about time blocking a little bit, like this structure piece, bringing that back. And so, do you ever have like a day off, but you feel like you did stuff all day, but you don't know what you did, or you didn't get anything done? Which, by the way, it's okay not to get anything done sometimes. Like, we all need to do a little bit of that too. As women in particular, we always feel guilty that we're not doing more, and it's okay not to do anything. Hence my goal of watching TV, which sounds horrible, but I was like, I'm gonna sit and watch TV, and literally just watch TV, like not do anything else. So if you wonder like where did the time go, but you felt like, really busy or you don't know what you did, that means you need to bring structure back into your life. And so, um, so time blocking is a way to kind of structure that in. So that's just looking at your schedule. So I would like encourage you just as a practice, especially if you're retired, take a whole 24 hour block and literally like structure all of it. I don't mean every minute and when you go to the bathroom and all that stuff, but like, and. And it's structuring unstructured times too. I don't mean that you have to do stuff that whole 24 hours, and obviously hopefully you're sleeping for eight of it, but taking part of those times and maybe blocking off. So if you're not a morning person like me, I block off from 7.30 to nine every morning uh, to do whatever. I make my coffee, drink lemon water, take my vitamins, I clean up the house a little bit, but I don't really do anything of like, major significance. It's stuff that's automated that doesn't take a lot of thought because I'm still kind of like, Ugh. Um, I don't see clients till at least 10 because I didn't work till eight, you know, but um, essentially I still block that off. I don't see anybody before now I'm for work because I block that off. I also know that I'm not going to be great for you at that time, you know. I block off um, Two nights a week, I try to finish my clients at 6 or 6.30, and I block that off to go to the gym to see Rebecca. Um, I put my phone down at 10.30 and block off that time to watch TV and then go to bed. You know, just like blocking off kind of some of that time. Um, I don't mean over-scheduling yourself or doing all the things, but taking 24 hours and scheduling, you know, thinking of the three to five things that are really important for you, putting those in first, and then... And then maybe the rest is unstructured. Maybe you're only blocking like a little bit of that time, you know, and that's fine too. Um, so try the, try creating a schedule for yourself for the whole day or like for 24 hours for a week and just see what it looks like. Sometimes if somebody were telling me to do that initially, I think I'd be like, oh, you know, I don't want to do that. Or, you know, when we went on vacation, nothing was super structured. But even we had structure there too. It was like we knew when the, buffet clothes for breakfast because I can barely get there in time. You know, like, um, I'm like, okay, what time is it open till? It's open till 11, perfect. Um, 
we had to make dinner reservations. If, if I wanted to have time to like sit on the beach and relax, I kind of had to create that too. I had to make sure that I wasn't off talking to people or whatever. I had to like remove myself from wherever they were doing pool activities and go sit somewhere else. If I wanted to take a nap on vacation, I actually had to kind of be like, all right, I think around four or five o'clock, I'm gonna go back to the room or you know, whatever it is. So it is like structuring the unstructured a little bit and allowing yourself time to have where you're not doing anything either. It would be like from four to six, maybe that's my transition from one activity to another, but I'm not, I'm just gonna leave that unstructured time and do whatever the heck I feel like it, and then that's fine too. Uh, so include everything that you wanna get done in a day. Um, meals, the uh, showering even, like that's the stuff sometimes I forget about, like, oh, I'll just do that later, and then you're like, oh, I really need to block off a half hour to shower. And don't underestimate how long it takes you to do stuff. Like, I shower in a couple minutes, like, probably not. Um, driving to places, like travel time, I block that off too. So like I work at two, I 